Welcome everyone. Without further ado, let's go to the main topic which everyone is requesting for a long time, the part-time jobs. So I will just share the experiences that I had before in DU Delft when I was studying and apart from that I have collected some uh, materials from the internet and also some of the experiences of my friends so I have combined them to a short video and I will also uh, put the text in a blog so I will just describe it. Let's start with the internships. So don't confuse part time jobs with internships. They are two completely different things. And first of all, internships, uh, the reason I'm saying this because that is also a source of income. So you can have like short internships as a part of a mandatory course requirement, which are generally of 15 ECTS during masters. And you can receive a tax free stipend and you don't need a work permit during the, that time because it is part of your coursework uh, unless it is not part of your coursework then that is something different uh, you need a work permit but if it is part of your coursework then you don't need a work permit you get a salary which varies between 500 to 800 euros per month depending on the type of work and the company and other kind of things and similar to that i have mentioned in this video check it out uh, you can also do a industrial thesis where you earn the similar salary but the industrial thesis depending on the ects is generally longer which is like 40 or 45 ECTS on an average for different faculties like computer science, mechanical, aerospace. So they get like nine months because 15 ECTS, five ECTS is per month. So depending on the ECTS, you can calculate the number of months you can get. that. So that salary will be sufficient for covering your living costs, not everything. Because many people asked me like, can I cover my part time uh, jobs can cover all the living costs? No, it's never going to cover all the study and living costs. It is just your partial living costs. So now getting back to the main real deal of the part time jobs. Uh, you can work maximum 16 hours per week. So it's basically two full days because normally each uh, person is supposed to work eight hours per day here in Netherlands. So in that sense, you can work two days per week if you work continuously or few hours each day depending on how you choose so maximum is 16 don't confuse it with 10 because many people say it is 10 but it has changed the laws have changed and in the if you choose to work in the summer months of june july and august then you can work for uh, the full time so you don't need to follow this part-time schedule you can work full time but as i have read in different uh, testimonials and also whatever i've heard from people you cannot work both so you have to choose either you work this three months june july august the summer months full time or you work part time 16 hours per week uh, in the other uh, months and so you cannot do both and one thing i forgot to mention is that all these part time rules what i'm saying now is applicable to only non europeans for europeans there is no restriction for non europeans which most of the people are as i expect and i have heard from comments so it is for them and apart from that the salary uh, during the part time jobs varies between uh, 11 to 14 euros per hour that is the salary you can expect and the employer is always responsible for applying for the work visa and to know more details you can check the working in netherlands video where i have explained a lot in details about the visa and the uh, orientation visa that you can expect after you finish your studies if you don't get a job everything is there in this so you are obliged to pay taxes when you start earning even though you are doing a part-time job and those kind of things will uh, succeed. I mean, it will happen automatically. You need to do it. But once your employer work, applies for the work permit, then you will do it. And one more important thing, it is very illegal if you exceed this hour limit just to earn some extra bucks. Some people do it. It goes unnoticed. But if you it gets noticed, then it will be highly difficult for you to enter this whole Schengen because normally they ban you if they find out that you are working illegally or exceeding these hours and 
you will be deported back to India and you will also be never allowed to enter Netherlands or any Schengen region. So be careful just to in the temptation of earning extra money. Don't do involve yourself, indulge yourself in this illegal activities and try to follow the rules. And once you start working, you remember to change your insurance to a standard Dutch insurance that we have during working, which is around 110 euros. So when you were a student, it was around 40 euros, but now it will change to 110 euros per uh, month. So what happens is uh, there is a catch that when you pay more, but as you are uh, starting to work but your salary is very very less when it is computed on annual basis so you get a care allowance to know how you can apply for care allowance and how much you are eligible check this video i've explained in very detail in a board whiteboard so if you apply for care allowance uh, anyone can apply you have to change the insurance and then uh, when you pay 110 euro you get around 80 to 90 euros as an care allowance every month and then Basically, at the end, you are paying around 20 to 25 euros for the uh, working uh, when you are working. But when you are a student, you are paying 40. So when you take this allowance thing into account, then basically you are paying less when you are doing a part time job. So in that sense, that is a win win. I mean, it is a benefit for you to you also save in insurance. And so I have enclosed a lot of websites below. Check the description below. Uh, everything is mentioned. So I cannot go through all of them. I'll mention some of the favorite websites where I also found them useful and some of them are also mentioned in different websites. So you can check Undutchables, which is very good for English jobs and URES Together Abroad. And as per my experience, the best is LinkedIn. That is the best non-formal way to come in contact with the recruiter and everyone. So before you arrive in Netherlands, just make sure to build a very strong LinkedIn profile. It's highly recommended. I will make a separate video how to build a good LinkedIn profile and uh, just start con contacting the recruiters or keep your profile updated so that your profile pops up in different job portals or startups so that they can start contacting you when you need them the most. And based on my experience, part-time jobs can be of two types, the on-campus jobs or the off-campus jobs. So on-campus jobs, uh, before going to that, let's cover the off-campus jobs. I don't have much idea on that, but I've heard that you can work in post tunnel, domino, subway and other random IT jobs in a company or in different startups as a developer or tester or something like that. So what you do is like you help those IT companies in small sub work or maybe if you work in post tunnel dominoes or subway you might need 99% of the time to know basic level of dutch because you are interacting with the local customers so in that sense language the importance of language comes into play so keep that in mind when you are trying for those kind of jobs but these it jobs don't require you to learn the language because most of the things here is in english and regarding the on-campus jobs, you can design courses or maybe design a web course like in a MOOC, the massive open online course, or you can teach. And normally the teaching jobs, that is the student assistants are mostly for teaching or grading are mostly for the uh, master students who are in, who just start their second year. So normally at the end of your first year, if you're doing a master's or at the beginning of second year, you might get this kind of jobs. And for this, you need to keep yourself updated, be in touch with your professors and uh, contact them if they are starting a new course or if they need someone to grade those courses. So in that sense, they have very limited positions. So you need to contact them beforehand and always remain proactive apart from being proactive in LinkedIn also, which will help you in the off campus jobs. And if you are in bachelors, then you can uh, go for part time jobs uh, basically in your third year or maybe from the beginning of your first year, depending on the experience or you have or depending on the requirements that that part time job has. Normally off campus jobs, I have heard people work from the beginning of first year. also if you're doing bachelors and again, yeah, this covers partially or fully your living expenses depending on the number of months you're working and it won't cover everything that has been asked by almost 10 or 20 people till now uh, 
And if you are coming to TU Delft, then I have seen that they have a very good startup incubator called Yes Delft, uh, using which you can uh, enroll there. And after a few months, once they, the database starts popping up, the based on the keywords that you've entered, similar to LinkedIn, it's a very small service, but they try to feed the startups that they have in that network to give you an opportunity to do a part-time job. So in that way, you can also land in a part-time job. But the thing is, you need to be proactive and I'd highly recommend again and again, LinkedIn. LinkedIn is like a God and one-stop solution for everything. So based on my experience, people who have worked on part-time jobs are mostly, some of my friends have worked as student assistants in designing courses. And they have said that it's really not easy, as I mentioned before. Uh, you need to always push yourself behind the professors or the PhDs who are responsible for designing the courses. And you also don't get the whole 16 hours every week to work because there will be multiple student assistants responsible for different parts. Suppose you are designing a course, then some may be designing the answer, some may be designing the questions, some may be responsible for grading. One person doesn't get everything. They want to divide the work. And another thing is, if you're in teaching, then most of the time it is in Dutch because you teach bachelor students. But nowadays, that is the advantage that slowly it is changing because of the internationalization. Even the bachelor courses are in English, so you get a lot of more opportunities as back in 2015 when I was doing master's. So now you have plenty more opportunities even for teaching in the beginning of your second year master's. And what else let me refer my notes okay so i have collected some websites where i found very good uh, experiences that students shared on doing part-time jobs that might be useful check the description below i have uh, put them there and i will show you in the camera okay okay so this is one website can you work while studying i have put it in the description below you will find it so this was posted in 9th of December 2018 by, uh, by the NAFIC. NAFIC is the official uh, Netherlands. Uh, they share many things about the rules and regulations. Sometimes they are not updated. So this is someone uh, in Saxion University of Applied Science. And she said that... Okay. What did I choose and how did I come to that decision? So let me see what she's saying. Uh, she chose to do an internship of the full time internship instead of doing the 16 hours per week. She was not able to do it. So she chose to work during the summer months because I told you, you can choose only one. And she did all the insurance and everything and then she works 40 hours per week. That is the full time work when you do in June, July or August. So you can read this that in details. So uh, what was her experience and uh, what did she do? Apart from that, uh, so that is Applied Science University. Here you have two types of university, Applied Science and Research based universities. Many people are coming to Applied Science. I'll make a separate video on that. And this one is from Maastricht University website. I'll also put it in the description below. So they have some job op openings and they have some student jobs. So normally in international offices and other places, you'll find a lot of jobs. So you see this Maastricht University promo team. This is something income is, I think, the introduction week. Tudelt also had something like IP introduction program. And you can work for project team, working at the student service center, in the employment agency. And this is the University of Tilburg. They have an English page specially. I think this will be really useful because there are many links there. So check all the links in the description below. There are English language jobs. And there are a lot of links which will be really helpful. Here also they mention about untouchables together abroad academic transfer, which is mostly for PhDs and research based jobs. And the companies that ask for non Dutch speakers in Netherlands, these are very big companies like Philips, ASML, Sony Ericsson, Carrier in Holland. Just check all these links. This will be really useful. Now you know the salary and hour limit. So let me finish what I missed. So uh, the regarding the international uh, office what I said 
is that uh, you can also work in international office some jobs like communication assistant or writing some blogs you need to contact them after you come here and apart from that there is something called introduction program which you saw like also as in Maastricht University and also happens in Tew Delta, I've seen it. So during the introduction program, which lasts for approximately two weeks, you earn around greater than or equal to 2000 euro and you have to do a prep work for around four or six weeks. And that's a very easy way to earn dirt cheap money within a very short time. But you need to obviously work for it and the number of candidates selected is also less so that is another way to earn money so there are plenty of ways and i would recommend if you choose that to go that way if you have a financial burden then it's definitely you have to take into account that your masters might get extended because it's very difficult to manage both and if you need to do a really good time management and planning if you want to manage both your masters in time and the part-time jobs also simultaneously so in parallel so if you like this video then don't forget to smash the thumbs up button and please share this video among all your friends help them because i know many people are in need of part-time jobs and this information and the links will help in some way to contribute to their uh, doubts clear their doubts and subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet. I'm Sambit Praraj. I do these videos on studying and living in the Netherlands. And I'll do many more videos. Till next videos. Peace off.